So if you've read Chapter 7 in the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge or discussed systems with your instructor, you know that aircraft piston engines use a very different ignition system than you find in most modern cars. Rather than tie our ignition system to the electrical system, we use two totally independent magnetos to provide a spark to ignite the fuel-air mixture. Now, if you dive deep into the documentation on our, our engine, the live coming IO360 L2A, you'll find that we have uh, two Slick 4300 series magnetos. The magneto I have here is also made by Slick, but this is a 662. You'll notice on the back we have six leads instead of four. This was used in six cylinder engines. Uh, some of the Continental 0470 and 520 variants, but the operating principles are exactly the same. Now we'll talk about some of the operating principles. If you recall from high school science, electricity and magnetism are pretty closely related. Whenever electrons flow in a conductor, a magnetic field will surround that conductor, and whenever a magnetic field is moved across a conductor, electrons are forced to flow in it. Explains why we need a deviation card for the mag compass, and it's also an operating principle by which the magneto and the alternator actually work. So with the magneto, we have a rotating permanent magnet powered by the rotation of the engine's crankshaft and a conductor in the form of coil windings. So we'll go ahead and take apart the magneto. All right, so we've got the two halves of the magneto here. This side is driven by the engine, the rotation of the engine, as we said earlier. And deep inside here, there's a rotating permanent magnet inside there that rotates as you rotate the magneto. Right next to it, you'll see is this black uh, cylinder looking thing. That is the coil. Notice it has two wires, one on each side, and the tab coming out of it here. So our coil actually has two windings, a primary and a secondary winding. Primary winding consists of a couple hundred turns of very heavy gauge wire wound around an iron core. One end is grounded to the case, you can see there. And one end connects to the cam operated breaker points over here. You can see the blue wire. We'll talk about those in just one second. The secondary winding is wound around that primary winding and has several thousand turns, about a hundred times the number of the primary, of very fine wire around, around the primary. This acts to step up the voltage from about a 250 volt spike in the primary to about 25,000 volt spike in the secondary coil. Some high voltage stuff. It leaves that coil through the high voltage terminal, which is this little tab here that I pointed out earlier. So we'll talk about those uh, cam, the breaker points, and the capacitor now. So you see the blue wire goes to a little tab here and a cam in this little gear. This is the, the cam is two little lobes here that spin as we turn the magneto. Spin and open or close what we call those breaker points right there. It's also shaft is uh, the shaft is co-located along with the the actual impulse coupling and the coil we talked about, or the magnet we talked about earlier. So when the breaker points are opened by the cam, the flow of the primary current is interrupted and the magnetic field collapses, generating a voltage spike around 200 volts, like or 250 volts, like I said earlier. This would be enough to arc across the breaker points and cause a less predictable, more weak spark. So there's a capacitor wired. Uh, between the breaker points, you can see it's actually on the exterior here and on the inside, this is where the lead goes to the capacitor. What that does is it holds some of the charge and prevents arcing for a few microseconds until the breaker points are open far enough uh, so we don't get arcing, so we get the spark exactly when we want it. On the outside of the case, you can see right here, there's a little uh, screw or a nut that goes to what they call the P lead or the primary lead. This is connected to the engine switch, or the ignition switch, sorry. So when the pilot selects the off position on the ignition or the other magneto, uh, it grounds out the respective magneto that we're talking about, and it turns it off. So when you go to do the ground check, when you do the run-up, this P lead is what you're actually engaging, or disengaging. Probably. So, when we talk about how the actual energy is on the secondary coil winding to our spark plugs, we have what's they call a distributor system. It's controlled by a gear, and basically we have a dielectric gear here with a conductive shaft. It sits on the high output terminal of the secondary coil winding, and metal shaft make contact with the metal, and we get, you know, conduction. It's made of a non-conductive plastic, as I said, and basically we have to align this gear, there's a nice black line on the tooth there, that needs to align with the red dot we see on the smaller gear here, so my magneto is timed correctly. I'm going to do that really quick. Alright, 
And when that uh, when that's all assembled, you see there's a little wiper with the call of finger up top there. That's going to rotate as the magneto rotates as well. If you look at the back side of the magneto. This is what they call the distributor block right there, and we have six contacts. So you can see the uh, the wiper is going to spin around, and when it's correctly timed for the cylinder or whatever spark plug it's supposed to be firing, the uh, electrical energy can go from the wiper to the contact and then get sent to the correct spark plug in whatever cylinder is supposed to be firing. All right, so everything we just talked about works fine when the engine is running normally, but during starting, the magneto needs a little bit of extra help. So the strength of the spark is proportional to the speed the magnet is rotating. It's driven by the engine. So during startup, low RPM, the magnet's not spinning fast enough to get a good hot spark. Likewise, normal spark timing happens in advance of the power stroke in the engine. Actually, 25 degrees before top dead center, if you look it up deep in the depths of the Lycoming manuals. With low engine RPM, we need to delay that spark. It could push the piston down during the compression stroke, not what we want, and spin the crankshaft the wrong way, again, not what we want. So we need a hot blade spark, and that's what the impulse coupling on the front here does. Inside, we have a heavy-duty clock-type spring, sort of like a windy guy, that connects some counterweights and a cam plate to the exterior body that you see here. At low rotation speeds, the counterweights are extended and get stopped by a stop, which is right about there you see the stop pin. As we rotate, you'll see one of those little uh, counterweights is going to engage that stop pin, <clears throat> and it's going to start winding that spring up. Eventually, there are projections inside that body. They're going to release the, uh, the spring at the right time. It's going to spin forward very rapidly and delay the spark, giving us that hot late spark that we need. So I'll do it real quick. Try not to injure myself in the process. So here we go. You see, spun it forward very quickly and I managed to keep all the skin on my hand this time. <clears throat> As the engine fires up uh, and starts normally, centrifugal weight is, or centrifugal force is going to keep those counterweights uh, retracted, disengaged, and it's going to be a solid connection from the impulse coupling to the mag magneto drive shaft uh, so that we get basically normal operation of the magneto that we discussed earlier. Uh, that's about it. And if I demonstrated that with uh, this magneto, which I found out the hard way, if you have your hand on the uh, P lead here, as you crank the impulse coupling, you get a nice uh, shock. So don't try that one at home, kids.